Hey, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by the video. I'm gonna be talking about Call of Duty Modern Warfare. That's right. It's a game that's been out for a little while, but I decided I'm officially going to do a full review on the game. I'll stick around for that. It's gonna be coming up right now. <laughs> Hey, thanks for clicking on the video. I appreciate you being here. If you're new here, think about considering subscribing for a little more of this beautiful face, if that's what you wanna, if you wanna look at it that way, I guess. I would love for that to happen. If you've been here before, consider leaving a like and a comment. You know what, if you haven't been here, also think about that. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm new here. Don't judge me that hard, please. All right, anyway. So Call of Duty Modern Warfare. You got three different type of games inside of the, of the uh, actual game itself, so. I'm going to get to each part, what I think about them, how I think about them. I'm going to grade each one of them, respectively, kind of. We're not going to take this too seriously, but uh, I do want to just try and give out what my thoughts are. So first off, the three different parts are the campaign, the multiplayer, and the special ops or the uh, co-op part of the uh, game. I'm going to start off with what I think is absolutely the worst part of this game so that I don't have to talk about it for very long and so that you don't have to suffer through it. Or, uh, you don't have to have a bad taste in your mouth when you leave this uh, review. So first off, uh, let me just say that Spec Ops is probably the least worked on portion of this game that I have seen. It is detrimental to even think about this mode. Uh, it makes me very... I don't want to say angry, but it makes me very, I, I just, I'm really against this mode altogether. Um, so basically I've, I've, I know this is going to be tough to hear because it's not a full, full aspect of what everything is, but I'm sure it's postly tuned on all of them the same way. I've only played one mission. I'm going to be straight up and honest about that. I've only played one mission. I've played that mission quite a few times. It is astronomically um, frustrating. Uh, enemies constantly spawn even though you're given an objective so even if you try to be tactical with it uh, it is not it is not conditioned to be a test of skills it is a condition to make a very very difficult thing um, become the entire uh, entirety of your game so they just keep ramping difficulty even though uh, you're given objectives to try and beat those objectives so basically what I'm getting at is you, you spawn in they don't <clears throat> at least from the beginning. I know that they've cleared this up a little bit with a, a few of the updates, but at, at the beginning initial content of this game, uh, you spawned in, you didn't get a briefing of what you were supposed to do. You were just given um, assault this position or whatever. And it wouldn't even tell you where the position was or how you were supposed to do it or what to expect or, or what the enemy intel was. It was just like you're in a you're in a building and you have to go assault a mission. Uh, it was a very poor way to enter, enter something that was supposed to happen. Um, it didn't feel like it was fleshed out very well. Uh, and then a, a marker pops up and you start making your way over there. Um, and so as you play it, it's not too bad. Enemies do hit pretty well, except that you can you can outmaster most of them. Um, there are some cool animations with getting uh, you know like the USB drives and like pulls out a tablet and you download the different stuff, um, which I think is are cool cool little aspects. Um, and the graphics are good throughout the entire game, uh, so everything feels pretty good. Um, but when it comes to actual playability of this of this mode, it just really ramps down with the constant spawning of enemies so even if you've cleared out a section of enemies later on something will spawn behind you um so basically there's this big stadium in this one mission and you clear out a section and you keep moving forward and then you clear out another section and you keep moving forward and so you're progressing around the outside of the stadium as you're working your way through this mission and the enemies just spawn and spawn and spawn and if you ever stop pushing forward they 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 spawn behind you to try and trap you and it's it's not effective in actually determining whether or not the spec op can be done. Um, it, it's just very detrimental to the overall playability of the game mode itself. Uh, with that being said, uh, the audio indicators are really are, are pretty good. Footsteps is a problem. Um, but as far as what the guns sound like, absolutely amazing. Uh, the visual is a huge, huge upgrade from what the series uh, from what the franchise usually has. Um, so there are definitely positives on the front of the actual game advancing the franchise. Um, but this mode is rough, very rough. Okay. So I'm done with that one. We're going to move that aside. 
I'm going to pull out the multiplayer section because um, it's probably my, it's my second favorite part of this uh, game, which means the campaign is literally, I will get to the campaign in a minute. Okay, so multiplayer. Multiplayer is a very interesting style to take for the Call of Duty franchise. There is a huge influence from the Battlefield franchise that you can feel in this game. Uh, it's very slow and methodical and a lot of cover seeking, um, a very campy line of sight, uh, you know, uh, play style. Um, there are a few classes that you can use to try and run around to make it more COD effective, but the mobility of this game is so low, uh, that battlefield, a battlefield feel is what you get for most of what you play. With that being said, how the game actually plays is a much greater swing. Um, it is actually a swing that I would more or less, I, I would lean more to that style of play instead of the jump packs, jumping off the walls, running around and being really fast and, uh, being able to like, like if you come into a room and you're having to look not only in front of you and to the left and right of you, you've got to look up and to the top left and top right. And, and, and when you get too many different spots trying to clear, it makes it almost impossible to play the game. Now, so when in this game, if you're running into an open area, you have that same problem. There are about 20 different spots that an enemy could be at, and you have to clear all of them before you can really move forward. Um, so that's where the, the camping of the uh, game starts to take form, is that people don't want to run into open areas that have 20, 20 different positions to get shot from. They want to just look at one position and kill people. And so that's more or less the player base and how the player base is working. It's not really a fault of the game. Um, one of the big things that I do like about the game is that there's not a three lane type system. There is, there is a very open, um, meshed network on how the maps are laid out. Um, so even though you get those 20 different views, there aren't 20 different enemies actually shooting at you. Um, it is possible to take a group of two or three and move around the map and strategically take out people who might be camping because they're not going to be able to respond to so many different enemies at the same time. Um, so that really comes to coordinating with your friends uh, and not moving so sporadically, uh, not moving so quickly. If you can, if you can get a tactical force to move together and watch each other's back, you can play this game very effectively and, and very skillfully. Um, so going back into more of like what it looks like and what it, uh, what it, what it sounds like, uh, footsteps have been an issue. I said that before, uh, you will hear your teammates footsteps a lot better, a ton better, like 1 million percent better than your enemy footsteps. Uh, enemy foot. I feel like they should have these settings flipped, uh, just for the fact of you don't want to, you don't want to be freaked out by your teammate running up behind you. You want to be freaked out by the enemy running, uh, up behind you. And so, I feel like those settings actually need to be flipped in order for this game to take an improvement or make a make a step forward in the right direction. Uh, at the time of this recording, it's pretty it's pretty bad. Um, so that's that kind of takes the well the audio of the footsteps is a problem. The audio of the guns is absolutely unbelievably amazing. It doesn't sound like a potato shooter or anything like they sound like good solid weapons. It's very enjoyable. Um, and there's, there's a really, I, I feel like the guns were worked on immensely and very, very effectively to make a quality, quality game. Um, there are some sound issues, sound bugs in the game that, um, especially since this last update, which I believe is 1.10, I'm not positive that it is that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's 1.10. Um, there is, a, when you call in a cluster strike or a, a predator drone or predator missile or a, a couple of other kill streaks. There is a whooshing sound that gets that's on the map for a long time and it is absolutely annoying. 100% terrible. Can't hear a thing. You can't hear your teammates talk inside of inside of a PS4 party. It it drowns out everything. You can't hear footsteps, you can't hear gunshots, you can't hear anything. You just hear that sound in that part of the map constantly. As a big detriment. Now, I don't want to make that as part of the review, but that is something that I feel like shouldn't, should have been tested and should have been seen before an update was pushed out. Um, I understand that that might not, you know, obviously that wasn't the case and that wasn't, that isn't what happened here, but um, it's a, it's a down factor. And so what I'm getting at with that is that this, this game is very noise heavy, um, very, very much. They wanted it to be realistic. So when you hear a tank, you hear a tank. 
I mean, it is loud. You hear the diesel motor running. You can't really talk between um, when it's when it's on or when it's going. The VTOLs are, you know, the, the Harrier type jets up above are uh, very, very loud. Uh, it makes it really difficult. So I, I appreciate and enjoy the fact of trying to make it more realistic and less arcade-like uh, personally, but uh, the, the noise quality or the noise sounds that you hear a ton are, are very aggravating. Um, so it's take, definitely takes a dip on what I think uh, about the game. I would, if you just turned it down, if you turned it down from you know 10 to about 8, it would probably be absolutely fantastic. Um, so with that, graphics, graphics are a step forward. Same thing that I was talking about before. Uh, there's a lot of detail that I like uh, in this game. Um, there are a couple of issues with, uh, with body parts hanging outside of, of barriers and walls. Uh, I've never liked that in games. Basically, you just need to make your walls thicker um, in order for them to be effective in hiding people. Um, of course, rocket launchers are a really hard thing to hide when you're when you have them strapped on the back like, uh, like they are in the game. But when you're seeing feet and uh, and butts hang out of walls because someone camping in a corner, um, it's it's very detrimental to gameplay because it's not realistic. I mean, you want to focus on realistic, and then you want to give us something where your where your butt hangs out of a wall, um, and people can shoot that butt and kill you. Like that doesn't <clears throat> that doesn't sit well with somebody who's playing the game. Um, so uh, last play. Gameplay, uh, again, it's a it's a much different style, which makes a lot of people have uh, some issues with it because we've been for years given uh, a run and gun uh, scenario, a run and gun gameplay, or you're superior if you can run and gun and you don't sit in a corner. Uh, and this rewards people who sit in the corner who camp a lot more. Um, so <clears throat> as far as gameplay, I think it actually swings in the right direction. I think they just pushed it a little too far. Uh, I wish people would be able to move a little faster, um, be able to get to cover a little bit faster, um, and, and, and so forth. Um, so for multiplayer, I think that does pretty good justice on uh, the multiplayer side. And then we get to the piece that resistance, the thing that they put a ton of effort in, the thing that I think is absolutely wonderful. Uh, it breaks breaks molds from what Call of Duty has done before, um, and that is the campaign. The campaign is undoubtedly one of the best campaigns that I have seen this franchise put forward. Um, I I would rank it in a in a A or God Godish tier for my personal opinion. Um, very very enjoyable, absolutely stellar. Um, the storyline is very compelling. I'm trying to not give away too many secrets here or, or too many, um, spoilers for you. Um, so the campaign is, the story is very compelling. It's very good. Uh, it is, it does take place in a fictional place. Um, and, but it uses influence from real life, um, to, to, move the story, I guess you want to call that. So you, you have a familiar, uh, familiarity, but the actual people that it involves, the country that it involves is not, uh, is not real. Um, so with that being said, I think that the limits that they push for what is acceptable within a game is phenomenal. Um, it starts off very fast and very controversial at the very beginning. Um, in Modern Warfare 2, you had no Russian and you had a very graphic and, and gore cool scene that was not taken correctly and it pushed the boundaries. Um, this does the exact same thing. It takes real life. Of, okay, so no Russian is not something that that I can recall ever happening of people actually mowing down an entire airport um, that... <clears throat> that is very rough. That is very rough to even think about. That is very rough to experience. Um, with that on this one, this this represents real events that have happened uh, and it correlates them. It does not do a historical reference. It does a rendition of them, but it pushes the boundary on what is acceptable within a video game. And I, I think it's stellar. I think that's absolutely great. There were a couple of times where I needed to stop and catch myself and say like, Oh my gosh, like I, I kind of played through something that probably could happen slash has happened today um, <clears throat> or in the events that have been surrounded through today. And so I think that aspect, that storytelling like bumps this up a point just by itself on that alone. The graphics and uh, facial animations for cutscenes are stellar. 
are absolutely fantastic. They grip you in the story. They, uh, they, they have, you can tell what a character is actually feeling or saying with how the, how the face is moving. They've done an excellent job polishing this, making it sound good, making it look good. Um, you know, like the syncing between lips and, and sound is just fantastic. I've absolutely loved it. I think it's, it it is a phenomenal piece of art that they have created and I praise it a lot to the end. Um, as far as, uh, explosions and things like that, there, I feel like there could have been a, a tad notch up. Like if I just want to nitpick, um, but when you see an explosion, you definitely know that an explosion happens. You know, that things are, are, are happening that, that are being dictate, dictated or shown, um, you can understand what's going on. Um, I just don't think that it's, uh, maybe, maybe it's just the ferocity of the bomb, the fer- ferocity, ferociousness, ferociousness, maybe I'm not sure. But anyway, um, that, that's just nitpicking. That's just strictly nitpicking. I think it is a fundamentally step, a, a huge fundamental step forward for the franchise to bring back, very excellent uh, storytelling and very excellent uh, piece of art, I guess, if you want to call it like, like that. I think that's the best way I can get that across to you. So um, my favorite part of the entire campaign is the final, final scene, the final ending um, that puts this the smack dab within the universe. You know exactly when it happens and what is going on. It is, it is so good, so 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 good. Uh, left me, left me stunned. Left me, left me super happy. Um, I think this was this is what carries this game to its full sixty dollar value for sure. Um, now I'm a sucker for single player story campaigns. If you don't know that, you do now. Um, so when I see a good story, I, I praise said good story and it definitely carries the review. Um, so even though the co-op was kind of a letdown because I really enjoyed Modern Warfare 2 spec ops where, um, you had waves of enemies or challenges of enemies and you had to progress through the storyline to help finish the game. Um, <clears throat> this 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 was a letdown from the from the co-op standard. The multiplayer is good. There's a lot of challenges. There's a lot of grinding. They did really they did a, a pretty excellent job of giving you something to strive for and making it more difficult to get um, <clears throat> by setting out different challenges for if you try to do the Damascus grind for camos, if you try to do the officer tiers for making sure that you have actual uh, things to do for the officer tiers. So I think multiplayer is a, is a solid multiplayer that is that is good to play and gives you the Call of Duty rage that you probably want when you play Call of Duty. I know that people, oh, you don't want to rage, da, 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 but it, it means that the game is difficult and that there are times where you're not having fun with it due to the fact that it is level for most playing. So someone who has not played very much can kill someone who's played a ton because of how the game is set up, which is a good balancing technique. And I think that that brings the community into playing because you can have, if you're new, you can have a terrible game and you can have a good game. If you're, if you're, uh, extremely old at the game, as far as you're very experienced at the game, you can have a good game and you can also have a terrible game. And so I think that that balance, that, that, uh, spectrum of playing the game is really good. Now, if I compare this to like Fortnite, if you've played Fortnite for a ton of time, you're going to be really good at Fortnite and that's just going to be what you do. And if you're new to the Fortnite, you're just going to get trounced all the time and it's not fun. And it's, so it's hard to get into the, into the game of Fortnite if you're new, because you, you have to go up against people who are absolutely way better than you. And that's tough. Um, and so it's not it's not welcoming into the game. So I think that they've made a pretty pretty good masterpiece. No, I wouldn't say masterpiece. They may play. They made a very good piece of of quality game here. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, long story short, uh, I'm gonna give Spec Ops a uh, a four out of ten just because the time was not put in there. It was not. It was not quality content and it was really rough gameplay so it's probably about a four out of ten multiplayer is going to get about a 7.3 let's give it a 7.3 um i'm not gonna i'm just gonna go off the dome here uh and the campaign is gonna get a 9.8 uh now obviously you haven't heard my scorings very much any anywhere at any point those are scores I'm giving. They're right here. You can see them uh for the game overall I'm gonna say it's probably an 8.5 
about an 8.5 for the entire thing, uh, for the $60 value and everything. Um, currently, at this state, there has not been a change on how the uh, how the pay to win happens, right? So you have a battle pass that gives you cosmetics because it's after season one, but you don't have a pay to win where you pay the battle pass to get guns that are actually better. That is yet to be seen. It probably, it probably slash probably will, leading that Activision is in this, is going to swing toward a pay to win scenario probably within the next, you know, in the next six months, it'll it'll swing to that. Uh, they will they will slowly implement that as the player base dies down and the loyalists are still there. As far as Call of Duty loyalists are still there, they they will implement a pay to win system, and that's that's where the crutch comes in. That's where this review will go out the window and not be viable anymore. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. If you're still here, you're absolutely fantastic. I absolutely love your beautiful face. Um. I'm just going to make that my slogan. You know what I'm saying? I love your beautiful face if you've made it here. So um, I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. I will catch you here next time. This has been the Call of Duty Modern Warfare Review by Football Freak 215 I hope you have a fantastic rest of everything, something. this. I don't know how to close these. I never do. I just, I really think that whatever happens, just cut it off like right